Hello everyone and welcome to this video where we are taking a look at the newest boat that just hit the workshop, the RSV Alston. Now this is a survey research boat, it features a gantry crane, it features an ROV, and a lot of new features actually that we're going to take a look at here in this video. So stay tuned and let's get going. <laughs> It's not necessarily a large boat, it's around 15 meters or 50 feet. You can see that it has this front area here with some equipment boxes. Below here there is a anchor and if you go to the roof you can see we've got some solar panels and this kind of equipment array. And then moving on to the rear you have this sort of uh, main cabin and then the massive rear deck or large rear deck that features this remote operated uh, SAP c 2 ROV and this gantry crane here. So in addition to that you also have two towfish that are located right here. This one is just for picking things up and this one actually has a camera as well and that is sort of the extents of the exterior of the catamaran. Back here we also have diving equipment with the ability to recharge it and then we have that on both sides as well as some cable and hose equipment here's a charging port for the rov however when it is in its cradle it is also charging so keep that in mind now there's some seating here for if you rescued someone or if you just need a seat and that concludes the exterior of course fighting gear and repair gear here If we move on into the interior, we get this kind of like hallway area with the dual doors. So it makes for very easy egress and kind of entering and exiting. Over here, we have some of the main controls for the ship. Here is the emergency control. If you turn this on, it'll actually begin this strobe light on top and you can launch a flare. Over here is sort of the information to the um, ship. Here is the heater. Here we have the tether system. I developed this in another video, but the essence is you activate it here, it goes green. And then if you fall off the deck while out here, the boat will automatically stop. It'll trigger this man overboard. And then you can deactivate that tether system. So it gives you a nice little ability to um, go on the deck if it is poor weather. Here you have some of the lights, you could disable the red lights as well, you could lock the doors, and over here is sort of a health kit, and over here is the anchor. Now, if it is too deep, the anchor will refuse to deploy, as you saw here, so it's not that it's broken, it's just unable to deploy for this depth. Over here is our main command center. You get a little pinboard picture here, but over here is the ability to control and operate the ROV. Now you can see it's ROVs offline. We will be turning it on and exploring that system. And over here is the crane controls. Now you could actually rotate this chair and it gives you the ability to operate that gantry crane that you see here. Over here is sort of a lounge and bedroom area with a little curtain. Down here is seating and a little kitchenette. So you can sit here and talk with your crew. Of course, there's not a large crew for this small boat. So you do get maybe four or five people. So this is perfect for that amount of people that you have. And then you have your two engine compartments. Now what I tried to do is make it seem rather than having built-in storage, it kind of has boxes and supplies. So you can see here there's some kind of spear gun box and over here there's another crate. Over here you do have your engines and then if you get over in, now I'm not sure, I just on a side note, I find this super unfortunate that they changed the, the system to walk. I want to make a video let me know in the comments if it bothers you but i can't stand now the fact that we can't jump up um and move through areas like this like you can't jump over this you jump in a vertical spot and you can't really move so that kind of worked because i kept doing it but anyway back on track here 
you get to the other side of this catamaran hull and now there's another box with some health and thermal clothing and over here we get a safe now if we open the safe up you actually have some weapons so if you have the need to defend yourself if you're in a circumstance where you have to defend yourself that's where you can get weaponry and then moving up here we can now deploy the drone but before we do that or the rov before we do that let's take a small look at the instrument panel here and the bridge now i will say i'm super happy with how this all turned out it's been a good amount of r d for me for this ship actually for this boat because i took a lot of systems that i previously had and try to consolidate them make them better and more functional so you'll notice this little display here is fully new it has the built-in throttle that's you know intentional we also get up here some other systems but over here this i'm quite proud of if we turn on this system so cctv seabed scan sonar system you actually have a display with three various systems on it now the first one i programmed all this it tells us what it's looking at you could flip through the cameras this is the deck this is the gantry rear and this is underneath us so you can see we're actually looking right at a shipwreck and if i turn on our diving lights it may illuminate it a little bit better so this is the camera system now if you turn on auto it'll actually flip through all the cameras so if you want to have just kind of a general cctv system i'm not touching any of the buttons it's just going by itself so i'm really proud of this really happy how this turned out now the light art i'm sure most of you recognize this this is by user white eu and actually i'm very happy with how this system ties in with this ship so this um seabed scanning actually uses two lasers that you see right here and scans the seafloor giving us an image of what we are looking at so when you have the shipwreck beneath us as we have this gives us a good idea of where we are going to be sending our rov before we even send it out sometimes if it is too deep then this image gives us the perfect kind of view of what we're looking at but of course if we go to the cctv you can see that is pretty much the same as what we had here for the uh, lidar and last but not least this is a new sonar system that i've just um, got a hold of now and i do love when you turn the button on then this is now activated when you press this now this is activated so this is a new system the previous one wasn't working so i came across this awesome sonar by user 13 and as you can see here in this video it looks awesome it works very nicely it works in a passive way or an active way so you can operate it in both systems however you could see here that this arrangement looks a little different i'll explain that in a second but what i loved is that it works with all the diff different display sizes so that's a huge bonus for me the previous one only worked with a two by two and i wasn't able to put it in this ship it kind of glitched out so i really love this system so huge kudos to to user 13 i love this i love this so much this is how it looks like when you spawn it and frankly uh it has kind of a more complex interface you could turn on the echo sounder then you can ping it you could turn on auto ping but i found that some of these buttons were a bit redundant and it went up to 12 kilometers so i thought how can i possibly reduce this um interface have only one instrument panel rather than these two and make a system that is a little more friendly for my types of ships so what i actually did is i consolidated inside the microcontroller i edited my version added a on toggle button and removed the fact that you need two instrument panels to now only needing the toggle button and over here it now goes up to a maximum of nine so it's not 12 kilometers but i find 12 too much anyways so nine kilometers is enough you can increase your range up and down and this button here turns the system on whereas the other button turns on auto pinging so you do get less um freedom previously you could ping yourself here it just kind of goes on an auto, auto ping cycle but frankly for me this is perfect 
and the nice thing that ties back to my ship is the microcontroller that I developed here actually enables things as you turn it on. So as you can see, when I press LiDAR, this turns on. When I press Sonar, this too turned on. So it has the ability to toggle a switch. So there's no physical key to turn the system on. Rather, you use this interface and now it turned on our Sonar. So when I press this button, it goes into the pinging mode and you can see it pinged something over there. But this kind of works quite nicely here. And of course, the passive system measures engine note. So right now we're getting the engine note behind us here. Now back to other systems. So I'm really happy with how this turned out all of it. Like I love my little screen recorder here. I love this interface to change. I'm going to start using this on a lot of my ships. And honestly, I'm going to make another video soon of how I update my standard instrument panel or bridge structure to be more optimized because I'm currently not a fan of all this like here you press beacon locator and it turns up over there rather and if you have these off then of course you won't see it so it does take a little bit of time now one thing I did add is this so ROV locator map so right now the ROV is offline so of course you don't see anything but if we were to turn it on then you'll see it and the advantage to this is that if you are far away from your ROV and you want to go rescue it, you can actually drive the ship to that to the ROV's location. This small ship or small boat does not have the auto uh, recover function, but my larger vessels will actually trigger an autopilot that will drive to the ROV. So that was a request that was made on my Discord server, and I actually added it, just not for this ship. Here I added only this display. Now over here, you can also view the rear cameras, so you see that there. And of course you have your standard kind of hold heading system, you have your position hold, maneuver mode, all your lights, and over here our radio system including megaphone, and here we have our standard autopilot that I've developed that works quite well. So that is the f a full look at the actual bridge of the ship and interior now if we go and launch this rov here first thing you'll want to do is make sure this is on and whatever channel you put it to here you then launch it however we'll want to turn it on here now i guess this shouldn't be called frequency this should be called channel so we had channel three for a second there we go it's connected if we go here now you can see it's on and if we turn this display on, it actually finds our ROV locator. So when we launch this, it will um, find where it is at all times. So you just have to push it out like that. And it will kind of stabilize itself so it doesn't sink all the way. And as you can see here now, it's facing opposite of where we're facing, but that is okay. And now if I spin myself back here, of course you can do this. Now I have a full video operating the ROV so this is not anything uh, new one thing I do have to look into is it seems that my uh, pitch controls are <laughs> like it's you kind of have to rotate a little bit to get the pitch going like this but even still it wants to fight me so I'm pretty sure my thrusters are kicked on trying to stabilize it as fast as possible so when you're obviously pressing the arrow keys that shouldn't happen I'll take a look at that but there you have it, this is the ROV system, and you can see this is its location, and over there you see that same, same thing. So you can use this and control your ROV down there. Now when you do surface it back to the top, then you'll rotate here and use, that, um, use the crane system to, to pick it up. Because of course you just, we just threw it off, but when we are trying to retrieve it, you'll want to use the crane. Well, you'll have to use the crane. So right now we're kind of putting it away, but if you use number one, the number one hotkey, you can actually rotate it kind of on the spot. So it is quite maneuverable. It's not perfect. There are some issues, but if with a bit of kind of practice, you should be able to pick it up quite easily. I mean, obviously if you put the throttle to the stops, 
and do kind of crazy things that will flip over and cause you problems, but otherwise it should work relatively easily. Now we put it here so you can equip the rope, plug that in there, and you may have to hop on to put the rope on. And here we'll put this one on, on the front. Now we get back into this seat, we'll move the seat over, turn on this. Now at this point, if you turn this off, it will start to, um, well actually you could do that, but if you turn this off, the ROV will get upset that it is uh, disconnected and it'll start to flash. So I highly recommend you keep that on. You see even this causes it, so you really have to have the ROV station on in order for that to stop. I will look into that because I guess as long as you are connected to this, the screen shouldn't really make the lights flash. But I know that they flash automatically if you've lost contact with your ROV. So that's kind of intentional if it goes too far or loses signal or battery or whatever, it will start to flash the lights so you can retrieve it easier. Now that we've done this, we can push out the crane and push up the crane. So that will give us the most distance from the boat, you can see here. And then we could start winching the ROV up. And once it is lifted up over the deck, you could swing this back over. And honestly, you can just keep swinging it like this and eventually lower this down and then move the whole thing forward. You can see it's now connected to the tracks. So that's the first thing, and what you'll notice is it's now facing the other direction. Previously it was facing out, now it's facing in. That really does not matter, it doesn't affect it, so it can be cradled in either direction. So now we've cradled it in, and once that's done, you can put these back. And that is pretty much it. Of course now, the ROV is offline, which is fine, you turned it off. You can turn that off too, and you can put this back to its original position. There isn't a locking feature for this gantry crane, so I'm quite intrigued if it will handle uh, poorly if there's a storm or if it will kind of move around or sway around, but I've not had any issues, even without the locking. And if you turn this off, it kind of just stays there, hopefully, but I've not had a problem. Uh, let me know if you have one. I may add a locking system. I don't quite like how this protrudes off the end, so I may actually remove those triangular parts on the end and not have it look like that. As promised, I did those updates. I gave the ROV a new motherboard, and I gave this control panel as well. So if now you turn this on and turn on the ROV itself, you'll have them connected and paired and it won't will no longer be flashing telling you it's disconnected so irrelevant of having this on which is a nice optimization feature because if you have this on and this on you start getting a lot of displays your leg will turn up now another optimization feature i did is when you step out of the room your monitors turn off i attached it to the same relay system that is attached when we are outside so if you are doing things you will not have your screens taking up and making your computer lag and the last thing was an addition and change of the actual rov itself so i actually updated the ability to go straight down it will no longer be fighting us so of course user error can still prevail but you can actually get it to be aimed right down for the fastest descent. So you can see I'm aiming down. As soon as you let go, it will attempt to auto right itself. So you kind of do have to keep feathering the controls, but it will now let you actually use a downright motion or downward motion, fully downward motion. Be aware that your roll will kind of get all out of whack if you go straight down vertically, but it does let you descend at a faster rate for this reason. So you do kind of have to keep feathering it and making sure that it is um, stable. So you can see now 
that we've gotten down there. You can turn down your throttle and slowly uh, make your way through the shipwreck. Now I'm holding two to get ourselves rotating around. And then you can press down or left on your um, arrow keys to keep kind of spinning yourself down. So with the combination of these features, you should be able to navigate and uh, control your ROV beneath the surface. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoy this creation because it took a while, surprisingly, because I really, really wanted to have the controls and operations new and refreshed and I did a lot of research and development. So even though it's a small creation, I did a lot of work to keep it fresh and new and easy to use. So hopefully you enjoy it. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for more. As always, happy stormworksing everyone.